fight for college football. You know, just down the... Thank you, Freeway, from uh, uh, at SoFi Stadium. They had the college football championship game between Georgia and TCU. Fans from both schools traveled from near and far, only to learn they would not be allowed to tailgate outside the game. They, and they were upset. They were blaming the city of L.A. for that decision, but it turns out L.A. had nothing to do with it. It was a decision made by the uh, Texas-based College Football Playoff Committee, same decision they made last year in Indianapolis and two years before that. And I just want to tell people across the country, we love tailgate parties. In L.A., every drive to work is a tailgate party. Right? <laughs> don't, don't blame us for this. So the NFL wrapped up their regular season yesterday. There was a magic moment with the Buffalo Bills with their teammate and friend, Damar Hamlin, recovering from cardiac arrest, returned the kickoff for a touchdown. The first play of the game, they ran it back for a touchdown, and Damar was in the hospital watching the game. The doctor said he set every alarm off when... Damar, I know we're all rooting for you. We're all hoping to, that you're, you're well and back on the field as soon as possible. Maybe watch golf for a little bit. While. <laughs> and then last night, there was another magic moment when the Detroit Lions knocked the Packers out of the playoffs. Running back Jamal Williams. <laughs> Lions fans or just hate the Packers, which is it? <laughs> so Jamal Williams set a Lions record for most touchdowns rushing in the season. And after the game, he was both emotional and hilarious. There's a lot of memories, a lot of emotion happening right now, but I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be able to play this game for my great-grandfather, and I'm glad that he's looking down on me. I know I'm making him proud. You said this ball's for him? Yeah, this is for him. And other things, stop playing us, man. We, made, we the Detroit Lions. We the Detroit Lions. Stop playing with us. I don't even watch TV, but I heard everybody already picked, their, picked the Packers over us. Stop playing with us. That's all I got to say, man. Don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. <laughs> Coincidentally, I said the very same thing in my wedding vows. Uh, I should add, the Lions did not make the playoffs, so he doesn't have to worry about anyone playing with them at all for quite some time. By the way, we're doing something fun tonight. Right now, as I speak, our monologue is being watched, analyzed, and dissected by two of the best analyzers and dissectors of all time, none other than Eli and Peyton Manning, who are doing a special <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel Live Manning cast during the show. Hey, fellas, how you doing? Hey, Jimmy, thanks for having us on. We're really excited to do this. We're excited hey, to Jimmy, have you. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy, don't let us throw you off, okay? You do your thing tonight, all right? Show your clips, make your little jokes, just play your game. Don't mind us at all. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll be sitting here silently just like your studio audience. We're uh, zipped up. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, great. We'll, we'll, we'll do. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll just be here listening in. Okay, great. That's Eli and Peyton, the Manning brothers. Good guys. Great guys, actually. They're going to be watching and commenting, doing their own show while we do this show. You know, we've been getting hit with a lot of rain and wind here in L.A. It rained last week uh, also. It doesn't happen a lot. And the storms aren't letting up. They say this cold front is so big. Oh, here we go, Peyton. Here we go. Looks like Kimball's dropping back. He's going to make an analogy. Yeah, he really needs to thread, on, thread the needle here, E. I mean, with this kind of setup, it's tough to pull out a punchline that's going to get the kind of laugh that Jimmy's looking for. Yeah, Pat, especially with the boring topic like the weather. But you know what? He has been doing this for almost 20 years. Yeah, come on, Jimmy. Don't blow this. Yeah, let's go. Pretend like you're a winner. Well, guys, guys, you're kind of yeah, throwing me off a little bit with the commentary during the... Jokes, wow, you know? wow, wow. Eli, now this is something you don't see a lot, okay? We got a veteran monologuer rattled by a little bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah, Pay, it's pretty obvious that Jimmy is really just off his game tonight. That's so. that. <laughs> I so. Can I just finish my cold front is so big joke? Would that be all right? Yeah, sure. Don't mind us. Yeah, we're just here watching the action. Okay, all right. So anyway, where was I? Oh, wait, this cold front. Oh, the cold front is bigger and wider than Peyton Manning's forehead. <laughs> yeah, let's just lower your audio here. Let's oh, wait, no, audio. you can't. That does not, you can't just lower my audio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he does this every night. This is amazing to me. I mean, this is weird. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's been doing this for like 80 years or something. I mean, he should be better at it by now, wouldn't you think, E? You would think 100%. But you know what, Pate? 
Now it's time to bring in our main cast guest, the guy we absolutely love, our main muchacho, the uno, the only, Guillermo. Hi, guys! Guillermo, what's Jimmy got to do here to get the crowd back? I don't know. I think this one might be over. I'll take in a tequila timeout. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I gotta go. I have a mean boss. Okay, that is not, that's not true. I'm not mean. And by the way, Eli, it hasn't been 80 years that I've been doing the show. Sorry, 85 years. I was just rounding down to make you feel better. All right. All right, all right, let's calm down. Take a breath, E, through your nose, if that's actually possible. Let's let Jimmy get back to his show. Thank you, Peyton, I appreciate it. And you guys get back to your show too, okay? All right, all right, so there we go. Peyton and Eli, you know, we, um, have a new, not improved, but we have a new speaker of the house after 15 rounds of voting. After a full Ali Frazier, Kevin McCarthy finally got his wish to be speaker of the house of representatives. It was the political equivalent of handing your kid an iPad to shut him up. But I was glued to the TV on Friday night. I don't know if you watch this, but things really started to spin out on the floor of the house. It, um, it got so out of control, I thought I was watching the Oscars at one point. Among <laughs> Among many heated moments, uh, Ken McCarthy went over to talk to this guy, Matt Gates, who has been bashing him nonstop, saying he wouldn't vote for him. And then uh, Mike Rogers from Alabama comes over. He chimes in, and you see, they have to grab him. That's a face mask violation. It's 15 yards. It was really the most exciting hour of cable news in quite some time. And while there was a lot of strong coverage of the House last week, no one distinguished herself more than Andrea Mitchell, Mitchell of MSNBC, who is the winner of this week's award for excellence in reporting. After a night spent offering big concessions to the Never Kevins at the risk of alienating some of his original supporters in the Republican caucus. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Her body was briefly possessed by a demonic duck. <laughs> Sorry, Angie. Andrea. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, remember Donald Trump? Used to be president? I guess he woke up on the wrong side of the tanning bed this morning because he started the day today by lashing out at talk show hosts. He wrote, wow, those Trump-hating late-night network shows are doing really badly. The worst ratings that those time slots have had in television history, says the guy posting to no one on Truth Social. <laughs> Why are the untalented fools who host paid so much? Does the DNC make a contribution as a wing of the Democrat Party? They are all a total joke. Not talent, no laughs. You know, you'd think being the father of Eric and Don Jr., he'd have more sympathy for untalented fools. But, and as far as, as how much money we make, yeah, we do make a lot of money. You know what we do with that money? We pay taxes on it. That's right. Thing. I remember a time back in not so long ago in 2014 when Donald Trump tweeted I was terrific. Now I'm not talented? It's hurtful. And by the way, while we're on the subject of low ratings, yours are lower than the wall you never built. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren calls you Locahontas now. President Biden was in El Paso this weekend, uh, his first trip to the border as President of the United States. You can see he showed up very, very Jose Cuervo, ready to swallow that worm at Cabo Wabo. <laughs> Old Cinco de Mayonnaise himself. And um, then oh, went, the audience, the audience saw that one coming a mile away. But it, yeah, he, I mean, I think we're going to have to write this off as a rebuilding year for the show. OK, guys, I think we're good with the Manning cast. This is not. Yeah. That was not a solid Monday Night Kimmel performance. -y. I mean, gonna need to step it up significantly to have any chance in the postseason with the Oscars. Wait, he's hosting the Oscars again? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, good luck in the second half, Jimmy. Yeah, well, thank you, guys. Um, now watch the Manning cast of Monday Night Football's wild card game. It's Dallas, Tampa Bay, one week from tonight on ESPN. That's Peyton and Eli Manning. Thank you for, thank you for being with us.
There's the applause you've been missing, Jimmy. Yeah, you suck. I, this is, now, you know what? Go back to cable. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> right. The Manning brothers are very abusive, it turns out. <laughs> Put on